Good evening, folks. We are once again up and running. So let me get everything switched over. We will check sound and we will commence the jam stream. Feels weird. I don't normally do this during the week, but due to scheduling issues, we are here on a Thursday. All right, let me throw on a real quick loop I did while we were loading up the stream, and I'll explain what I plan on going through today. I was a couple minutes late starting the stream because I was messing around with the new sound setup that I did last time, and I forgot how I, I set my mics up. So it took me a second to, to remember, but I think we got everything more or less configured. I'll rely on people to let me know if the sound sounds good as we proceed here. Hey, Iconic's popping in to say, can't stay at the moment, but dropping in. And wish you a great stream, friendo. Thanks, Iconic. Hope you have a good rest of your day. Or evening, rather. Thanks for, for popping in, and I will definitely catch you later. All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna let this loop sort of play in the background. It's real simple. Just it's just a drum, drum rhythm plus a two chord string melody. But while we're doing the intro here, a little serve to kind of explain what I'm planning on covering today. As we get up and running, I need to mention a disclaimer at the top of the stream. Maybe I'll mention it again as people come through, just as a warning. The weather in my area is actually worse than yesterday, and it is a literal blizzard outside right now. So if the stream dies suddenly today, unlike yesterday when I accidentally clicked the button because my tablet screwed up my inputs. If the stream suddenly dies, it's probably because my power went out and I'll have to go put an update on Twitter and on Discord. So just throwing that out there as a disclaimer. Okay, so what is on the agenda today? So as the stream title would suggest, we're going to be spending some time in the technique and sound theory discussion after warm up. So we'll start with warm up. I'll probably do maybe a little bit more of an extended freestyle practice session just to kind of, again, get the blood flowing, get started. And then technique and sound theory discussion specifically, we're going to be talking about bass related techniques. And it's probably going to be a mix of like a bass catch up to go over the techniques that we've talked about in the past. But I also had a request from one of the regulars here to spend some more time going into lip rolls and how lip rolls work and whatnot. So I'll definitely be going over that as kind of like a reference for future stuff. And then depending on how long it takes to go through all of the technique and sound theory discussion, after that, we will transition over to BGM brainstorming using the new audio setup. I'm gonna have to switch my mic around again, but using the new setup, I'll still be able to talk over what I'm doing. And that seemed to work well last time. So it wasn't just dead silence for me while I'm noodling around on the, the loop station here. And we'll see what kind of ideas we come up with from a BGM perspective. So let me go ahead and turn this off. We will get ready to start with warm up. Let me see. Let me double check output on sound. 
I also need to be careful because I have essentially dual sound devices set up now for my loop. I have it set up for BGM creation mode, and then I have right now everything playing through the mic source in OBS. And if I had both on, you'd probably be hearing a duplicate sound. So I need to be a little bit careful with that. But let me check levels and, and peaks to make sure I have everything set up correctly here. So let's see, we're getting um, let me boost boost dynamics a little. Mic gain seems about where it is for for snares and everything. Okay, I gotta be careful with the sharp ones. Okay, we'll leave that about there for now. And when I'm doing the warm up, I'm gonna keep an eye on the audio readout and make sure we're not spiking too high. So that being said, I'm gonna run through some some freestyle practice to get warmed up, and then we will get things rolling. Let's get started. voice crack
All right. I think for for basic warm up, actually, I didn't really do any any extended lip bass, but we're going to be talking about that as part of the technique and sound theory. So that's probably all right. So let me reach over here and change the current caption. We will move on to technique and sound theory. So for technique and sound theory, I thought a little bit after chatting with some of the, the folks here in the stream yesterday, I thought a little bit about how I wanted to sort of approach a discussion today for technique and sound theory. And it was Capri Sun that had mentioned, it wasn't on stream, but it was in a community discord earlier in the week. Capri Sun had mentioned wanting to talk a bit about lip rolls and lip roll techniques. And that got me thinking of how that kind of fits into the overall categorization of beatbox sounds in relation to other things in the sound tool kit when it comes to creating sounds. So for example, we, we always talk about the standard bits of the rhythm percussion drum kit in quotes that is the basic core of beatbox sounds. Your kicks, your hats, open, closed, cymbal, hi-hats, and then you have snares, which opens up to a whole bunch of different sounds like we've discussed on the streams here with the kind of more dull sound of a PF snare, and the sharper sound of an outwards K, the little bit more crisp and breathy sound of an inwards K, and the really sharp clap type sound of a BGM or spit snare. And a lot of things in between. So in keeping with that idea of categorization, I wanted to kind of focus in on bass and what I'm calling bass related techniques. So in beatboxing is kind of a recap for folks who might not have heard me talk about this before. When it comes to the sounds for basses, there are a whole bunch of variants and main techniques that involve vocalization of basses using your voice, your vocal cords, or parts of your vocal cord anatomy to create the bass sounds. And we spent a lot of time talking about the mechanics, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the techniques themselves. I'm just going to give a quick example of what they are, and then we'll kind of go through how I sort of structure this rough discussion and so for the vocalized basses, the kind of entry level beginner example of one people learn early on of the vocalized type of techniques would be throat bass. The <laughs> when I do my warm ups and a lot of times when I lead off a beat, when someone redeems the drop a beat freestyle here on the channel, a lot of times when I lead off on just a, an improvised semi routine just on the spot. If I know I'm going to be using a bass, a lot of times I will start with the throat bass as kind of a lead in and warm up just to kind of prime my vocal cords. I could do all of the bass sounds cold, but they sound a little bit better once they're you're sort of ready anatomy wise. So for the throat bass, that's the one that sounds like dropping the throat bass down into the vocal cords and letting them resonate and rattle a bit more instead of having them tight to create the throat bass sound. You get the vibration bass, which sounds like and my voice is still not 100% warmed up, so my vibration bass probably isn't going to come across the mic as strong as it is if I'm fully warmed up, but you can kind of hear where the vocal cord changes as you go from the and I'm just going to drop it into the range where a vibration bass happens and hopefully it's audible on the, the broadcast. But if you take it from and that 
lower register that gets more of a rattle and reverberation is the vibration base and it's two cousin techniques usually people learn the throat bass first then vibration i think it's easier that way hey lava king's here what's up lava king welcome to the stream how are you doing this thursday evening how's how was uh judo hopefully your arm is feeling better So moving along on the, the quick overview of the other bass techniques, we have lower register vocalized chest bass, which combines the heavy kind of growl and rumble of a chest bass, the <sighs> with a vocalized note to get. I don't know why I'm getting a bit of a crack in my, my vocal cords today. I don't think I'm sick, but the. The vocalized chest bass is handy for hitting lower register notes, and the more you practice pushing that sound lower and controlling it, the better it works for something like that. We have the inward bass, one that I'm not as good good at, and I don't really talk about a ton here on stream because I'm actively trying to get better with it, but in breathing in, unlike all of the external vocalized basses, you get a... Whoa, 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 whoa. I think it's a little bit easier for me to do inward bass with my mouth closed, but the sound changes slightly depending on how your mouth is open or closed while you're breathing in. And that's, to me, that was the hardest bass technique I ever learned. And I'm still getting better at it. I will start working it into patterns and routines eventually when I feel like I can do it effectively on the fly. But that kind of... That's another one that takes a bit to warm up for me at least all right so we got to hydrate from lava king but the main point of the topic of this technique and sound theory discussion for the jam stream today isn't just going over what we kind of talked about with the base techniques and how they work and how they fit into different parts of pattern and routine creation i i wanted to Kind of extend the conversation to what I consider bass related techniques. So they might not be created in the same way as a vocalized or a throat bass or inward bass or vibration or any of the ones that use your vocal cord anatomy, but still can produce low end sounds that supplement overall parts of a beatbox routine. And this isn't really new. But I figured it'd be kind of a different way to approach it since depending on who you talk to in the scene, the classification of the bass type sounds, bass related sounds and basses, it kind of blurs and not any one school of thought really is correct. And I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about what that means for a lot of these techniques that, again, aren't part of like the vocalized basses. We'll talk a little bit about lip bass, lip oscillations. I could probably touch on tongue bass a little, but it's not one I, I use a, a lot. So I don't have a ton to really say on tongue bass. But we'll also devote time talking about the lip rolls, which, again, that was a request. So even if Capri Sun's not here today, they can check out the archive for the stream. And hopefully the section where I talk about the lip rolls will be helpful. And at least a good reference when it comes to how these similar bass sounds fit together and again, add to the, the beatbox toolkit kit and things that you can use to help construct your beats. So first example, the what I consider one of the most elementary sounds, at least for me when I was learning, the first technically bass type sound I learned was lip oscillations. The first vocalized bass I learned was throat bass, but the first actual legit bass type category sound was lip oscillations and i'm not gonna again go through mechanics here unless people want me to break down how a technique is done since we've talked about that on previous streams a couple times throughout the the last year or two i'm definitely down to to break down mechanics and techniques if again if people want to a refresher but for now i I'm, I'm want to explain the techniques a bit more instead of explaining how they're done Again, folks in chat, just let me know what you, you can want me to focus on when it comes to that. And I'm will that gladly 
take a second to break stuff down if I need to. But lip oscillations, again, sound I use every once in a while, but not super commonly because it tends to be superseded by the, the more heavy basses. But lip oscillations sound like... The quote-unquote pitch of the bass when you're doing lip oscillations because they're, they're basically just flapping your lips but keeping the corners of your mouth tightened to have the flapping and reverberating part of your lips be in the middle instead of the whole thing. If you don't tighten up your lips at all and just let your lips flap with by blowing air between them, you get the horse lips, which is what my original teacher called it. And that's just a... That, that sound should be familiar to most people. I'm sure everyone's done it at some point. Just a... And again not going into too much detail on the breaking down the technique, but tightening up and forcing that sound into the middle of your lips and controlling it is how you go from to and it's very controlled, but you can alter the pitch of that sound by tightening or loosening your lips. So if you take the lip oscillations and you tighten up, the pitch goes from not a huge jump maybe like a one or a half step upwards likewise if you loosen up and or hollow your throat while you're doing the sound the pitch will drop and it'll become kind of more resonant and and hollow and that would go from to And that really kind of, it's a little bit echoey. It sounds like it's deep. The sound is kind of like a deepness to it. That's the throat hollowing. You can loosen your lips up to drop the pitch, but if you want it to kind of sound like it's, it's echoing and hollow, you do that by opening up your throat while doing the sound, which is a technique that affects a lot of things in beatboxing, hollowing the throat out. Taking the lip oscillation as, again, a bass-related sound, it, it's essentially... the it's sort of used synonymously in some cases with lip bass, but I separate them because I'll talk about lip bass in a sec. Another handy thing that a lot of people have done with lip oscillations, because it's such a simple technique to do, is they'll vocalize a harmony or like a, an octaving melody on top of the sound to supplement it and give it more tone and or, again, keep, create a harmonizing bass note when they're creating it so it's not just the sound of the lips and you do that just by singing a note while doing the lip bass or lip oscillations rather at the same time and it goes from to and you can even do a throat bass and give it more texture if you wanted to which I think I did a long time ago I don't really do it so much anymore but instead of just a you go And the tricky thing for people who have a musical ear is instead of just doing a random note overlaid on top of the lip oscillations is they'll, they'll pick the note and try and octave it up or harmonize the song note. And I'm not too good at that because I'm not really adept at music theory. I'm still learning. But you could totally take that to pair with the low note and give it a, a higher mid-range note and combine it. And that could produce some really interesting effects when it comes to being used in a beat. You could even do things like have a, a descending pitch by just taking the hummed note and changing the pitch descending wise while doing the same thing with your, your mouth so that the oscillating part of the lip oscillations is descending along with the note that you're singing at the same time, which sounds a little bit complicated, but it's just a simple matter of doing like a pattern on your voice and doing the same thing by loosening your lips a little bit. And you get, you can go up, down, and change the pitch that way just by changing tightness and controlling the, the pitch with your voice. It's fairly simple to learn. And the more you practice at it, the better it becomes as a tool for employing in different beat creations and, and whatnot. Again, I learned it early on. And a lot of the early stuff I practiced used the lip oscillations as a bass type. And then I kind of, 
started switching in other things that I, I liked a little bit more, like the vocalized bass techniques and whatnot. But moving on to the slightly more controlled, tighter lip bass, the true lip bass is created by buzzing with your lips, same way you would do for a brass instrument. And it's a little bit tough for me to do that on its, on its own by itself because I don't practice it that way. But by keeping your lips very close together and creating a buzzing whenever air is pushing through them, you can combine that with a bass note to create a really interesting texture and distortion, which I tend to prefer over doing the, the regular lip bass. And for that, it sounds kind of like... And I was thinking about this yesterday, in fact, because I was just practicing while I was doing something else. The combination of the two works pretty well for electronic and like kind of synth wavy type things. And I was trying to think of the best example to show on stream so people can understand what I'm saying. But if you take the note, either a clean sung note or even a, a throat bass type of distorted note and combine it with the lip texture, that's how you're getting a, something that sounds like... And the actual bass is slightly distorted by the the texturing that's being caused by your lips, which is just combining techniques together and slightly changing the way a sound is coming out and then using that to alter what the listener hears. And the lip distortion filters and techniques are really an interesting thing to experiment around with when it comes to things like the vocalized basses. Because you can even hear it in some of the things that I do, like when I'm warming up or starting a, like a freestyle thing that I'm putting together just off the top of my head. If you take the... And I tend to, by out of habit now, force that sound through a narrow opening of the lips and get into buzz just a little bit. It goes from... To... There, that's, a, that's a better way to do it and that's not creating any difference in the technique it's just reducing sort of the the sound channel of, that the the noise is going through and it, it adds texture to it that tends to give a lot of interesting effects and you could play around with it and, and sort of change the way the sound works another real simple Sounds simple, but another effective way of changing the sound is just opening and closing your mouth. And we kind of do that in illustrating the sound. Just again, it, it's natural. But if you take the, again the throat bass and just go like a wow, make like a wow type of movement with your mouth as the sound's coming out, it changes the texture of it. And that's how you're getting like a wow, 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 and doesn't sound that complex but it does change the way the sound again hits the ear and a lot of the different things when it comes to basses and bass related related techniques can all be kind of interchanged and layered and you could play around with the different combinations of the distortion or the way the techniques are coming out which makes experimentation a lot of fun in beatboxing it's one of the things i really like about it you can take an idea and say how what happens if i combine this idea with this other one or this technique with this other one to create like a hybrid sound or a new sound altogether. And maybe we can talk about that on a future stream too. The idea of kind of hybridizing techniques to create new ones or to change one or both of the originals. But let's see. Another one of the techniques, again, I said I'd touch on it. Tongue bass, another one that, again, I don't use a ton. But it is helpful to know how to use in the arsenal because it, it is effective if you kind of practice and refine control over it. And that's the... It's created by rolling your tongue without any sort of vocalization, just using exhaling air pressure to have your tongue essentially vibrating against the top of your mouth. And by sustaining it and prolonging it, that's how you get the 
similar to that, you have things like the OD bass, which I'm not super good at. The my, my OD bass is very, very soft. I really need to practice that more. Last time I talked about it, it took me like a full two minutes to remember how to even do the technique since I never use it. But it's done by vibrating your tongue like tongue bass. You're just doing it without breathing. You're using mouth pressure to get that. And the more you hollow your throat, the more it sort of echoes a little bit. It's a very strange technique, but it's really cool if you get good at using it. But the tongue bass itself the is also useful, just like we talked about with the lip oscillations, in that you can vocalize something to layer on top of it, and it goes from to and one thing I've done I haven't done it on a routine recently I kind of forgot again because I don't use the sound that much you can use a high hummed vocalized note on top of tongue bass and it sounds kind of like a siren or a a revving up sound kind of like a, an engine or a turbine you hear it a lot in uh, dubstep dubstep type songs and or drone bass to some extent and that unlike the low bass type sound if you go for like a high pitch sound on top of the tongue bass you get and that's just a high hummed note on top of the tongue bass at the same time and that's how you're getting a and you can have it go up or you can just have it sustain at a high note I don't normally see people do that a ton. Maybe it's not really that common of a technique, but it is an adaptation of a legitimate bass sound, just taking a higher sound instead of a lower one to create the final result. Let's see. And anything else as far as the bass types before I move on to the lip rolls? There's some other ones like vocal bass, which I, I'm not super adept at, so I'm not really going to try and demonstrate that here. It won't, won't sound the cleanest. But there are some more harmonic and more melody-based techniques you can also use for the sound creation. And vocal bass is really neat. It's just not a sound I use super often. If you wanted to be more on the melodic side, it's definitely a good one to learn. Maybe I'll try and get better at that so we can talk about it since it's very different from all the other ones. And I see we have a drop a beat from Capri Sun. What's up, Capri Sun? Welcome to the jam stream. How are you doing this Thursday evening? I am in the middle of a blizzard at the moment. But other than that, I am just kind of chilling and, and talking about beatbox stuff. Prison says, I'm sorry I'm late. There was a new episode at least 30 minutes ago of a show I've been waiting for for years and I completely forgot I'm here now. Oh, no, no, don't worry about it. You don't have to apologize for being late. You can show up when, whenever you can. And uh, you can catch the earlier part of the stream, which is basically some discussion about bass type stuff in the archives. We haven't talked about lip rolls, so you didn't miss anything on that front, Prison. Yeah, how's it going, Lava King? I saw you early up in the chat. But yes, welcome to you too. Oh, I see Capri Sun had to go to the ER. Oof. Everybody's having injury slash medical related problems. Hope you folks are doing okay. Definitely take it easy. Don't push yourselves. All right, or just adjusting my mic. We let let me get the drop a beat redeem for Capri Sun. Think about what we were just talking about. Maybe I can try and work in some of the examples from the discussion about bass and bass type techniques. So let's let's come up with something. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
All right, well, let's continue on. I haven't been asking the chat for feedback on the sound. Let me know if I need to adjust anything, if you folks are having trouble hearing me. I need to slightly reconfigure my setup because I forgot what I did last time. I was telling the stream at the top, but I think we got it all dialed in. So hopefully when we switch to BGM in a little bit, everything will be fine and I'll have to play around with stuff in the future. Okay, so continuing on the discussion of bass-related techniques, this is the part that, again, Freestyle had requested earlier in the week to talk about here on the Jam Stream today. So we're going to spend some time talking about lip rolls and how it relates to bass-type sounds to not just rehash what we've talked about before. I'll try and, and add in some additional information for Capri Sun and the folks that are interested in learning about beatboxing that's going to hopefully be useful or at the very least interesting. So basic dry lip roll, the sound that's kind of the precursors, to the more forceful variants that we're going to talk about in a little bit. The dry lip roll is one that sounds like I'm kind of curious as what that does in the audio. That's where everything starts when it comes to the lip roll centric techniques and Kind of in line with what a lot of the pros say in their tutorials when they teach the lip roll. They recommend learning that one first because it teaches you the mouth position in order to do the variants that we're going to get to later. But in line with what we were kind of talking about last time we went over it on stream, which is, it was a while back. So I wanted to kind of recover or refresh a little bit when we talked about the lip roll itself is done on the corner of your mouth. And it's right at the very corner where your, your lips meet. And the way you start learning the sound in the beginning to get the, the motion before you can get the sound to come out is to do like a kissing noise. I had linked, I think in the Discord, or did I link it in DMs. I need to be careful what I'm, I'm saying here. Let me double check our, our Discord and see where I put it. Oh, okay, good. I did put it in media share. So I linked a tutorial a couple days ago from a pro in the beatbox scene. I think he's from somewhere in Europe, Bulgaria, maybe his name is Skiller. He's a, an OG pro well, well known in the series. He's well known in the scene, extremely, extremely talented and skilled dude. Hence his name. But I linked one of his tutorials on create doing liberal and liberal variations as kind of like a, a supplement to what I'm going to talk about here. Capri Sun says, I forgot to watch it. The whole thing, the ER threw me through loop. Ah, you're fine. Don't worry about it. It's there. It's just there for reference. I didn't expect you to study before the stream today. I just put it in there as a resource in case it was useful and it'll actually illustrate the mechanics of the liberal Far better than I can because you can actually see a face and you could see the the position of the the lip roll in the mouth. But I'll explain it here and kind of how it works real briefly, and then I'll go into why I wanted to talk about it with the bass related techniques. But yeah, you're fine, Capri Sun. It's not a, not a big deal. Hopefully, between my explanation and a much better one from Skiller, it'll help you get closer to the sound and and get you on your way. The problem with the lip roll that I think a lot of people don't realize is you really have to just practice the muscle memory portion until your lips gain strength to be able to do the actual sound. It can be kind of discouraging. I know it was for me when I was first trying to learn. And then 
someone told me I was practicing the wrong way, which is why it was taking me so long to learn the sound. But once you select a corner of your mouth and kind of what Skiller says in the video too, you want to pick a side that is going to feel natural for all of your sounds that are done on one side of your, your mouth or your face or whatnot. So the inward K is an example of one that uses face, face positioning and having you pick a side unless you do it in the middle, which is very uncommon. For me, I do my inward Ks on the left, so I, I chose the left side to do my lip rolls. Inward K is a different, different beast, but I wanted to explain the side choice that I picked just because it, it made more sense. Capri Sun says, you sell yourself short and you've helped me with many sounds lately. Oh, that's very kind of you, Capri Sun. I just try my best to explain things. Again, I'm not a, a pro teacher, but I can kind of speak to my experience when I was learning to beatbox several years ago now, and hopefully it can help people, especially when it comes to things that might have been an obstacle for me because I was practicing the wrong way. Chris also says, for me, it seems that to be the left side. It's where I default when I experiment with sound. In that case, it's probably good to, to stick to that side. Like You could pick an opposite side, but it's not going to feel as natural if your default tends to go left. I know a lot of people who do most of their sounds on the right. I learned how to do my inward K left. Hence, when I started trying to learn lip rolls, I said I'm sticking to the left. But in the corner of your mouth, when you have that kissing noise, which is just created by using a bit of suction and, and pressure, not, you're not breathing in for a regular lip roll. It's just lip pressure, essentially. And, and you're getting that. That's the motion. It should sound like a like a like a kissing noise, essentially. And I highly recommend seeing what Skiller's face does when he zooms in and it'll, she'll show you exactly what that sound is supposed to look like for the motion. But once you can get that sound down, you just keep practicing that and it's going to feel weird and the corners of your mouth and the left side, if you're doing it left, is going to get tired, essentially, because it's not used to that type of motion. But if it does, it means you're doing the motion correctly. And that's where it starts. It's just practicing that till you can get the sound to come out comfortably. And then from there, you kind of try and elongate and drag the sound out a little bit. And the key thing, once you can kind of get a little bit more of a rolling sound to come from just doing this, the kissing noise in the corner. Once you can get that to happen, you want to take your jaw, drop it slightly and move it to the opposite side you're doing the sound on. And again, Skiller does that in the video. You can see how he, he drops his jaw slightly, not, not open. You're not opening your mouth. You're just dropping your jaw slightly and moving it to the opposite side slightly. You're not going to go completely like crooked jaw with it because that would be painful, in fact. But by dropping your jaw slightly to the side when you're doing the kissing noise and trying to elongate that rolling sound, you're creating more space for the sound to sort of reverberate in your mouth. And that's how it goes from a... to a and once you can get the the actual lip roll sound them to come out then it's just practicing that over and over again until you can do it on command and it feels really natural and we talked a little bit on i can't remember what stream it was it might not even been a jam stream but i talked about a really useful drill once you can do the lip roll sound that is good for just spamming and it's builds a lot of strength quickly because it, it's very kind of exertion heavy on your lip lip muscles and that's chaining in outwards and inwards sound without changing position on the corner of your mouth so if you breathe if you breathe out while keeping your the right side of your mouth again doing it on the left kind of tight and unchanged but you breathe out and then do the lip roll in you get that's outwards and then if you do the lip roll in afterwards Capri Sun says, hold on, sound just changed in more, more the way your sounds like kind of way. I was dropping my jaw too much. 
Ah, that's pretty normal until you get kind of like, you have to find a sweet spot, which makes the technique so difficult to describe. But if you drop your draw too much, you open too much of a pocket and then the sound can't sort of vibrate. But if you keep it still a kind of narrow gap between your two lips as you're breathing in, but drop your draw slightly and to the side, you're giving it enough space to just vibrate a little. And that's how you're going from to and you'd be surprised because I know uh, talking with Capri Sun about the, the technique and whatnot and, and their kind of arc and learning a lot of these beatbox sounds. Sometimes it's just a minor tweak to the sound and it gets it to click and it or gets you closer to getting it to click. And all you had to do was make a micro adjustment to what you were doing, which is why I always recommend whenever you're learning any technique, watch a bunch of different tutorials and hear people, people explain things in a different way. And if you try all the different ways, you might find one that clicks with you faster than just trying to like spin your wheels on one that's a little bit tougher. And so that's good. So if you take the sound again to get back to the idea of drills, so you have an the outwards. It's not really a sound you'd use on your own that much. It just sounds kind of like a fart. But if you do that and then you do the lip roll inwards after and you do it back to back to back to back to back and chain it, you get. And again, I've talked about this before, but it's relevant now. So we'll kind of go through it. You go for the, the chain. just Sounds really simple, but in keeping that position, you are training that part of your lips to do the motion repeatedly and it will make your face hurt. If you do it for like 20 seconds without stopping, you'll feel it. You'll feel your lips burn. And that's good because it's building that strength and endurance. And I've always wondered if you do a lot of lip roll type techniques and you practice a lot, if it'll change the shape of your face. I honestly can't tell. I've been doing this for a few years now. And unless you do something really extreme, I don't think you're going to suddenly have like a, a jacked side of your mouth because that lip muscle is really strong. Kind of in the same way that, that wind instrument players don't have really weird shaped lips just because they play an instrument that uses lip strength. But taking the, the inwards, outwards lip roll chain and you start practicing being able to do it just comfortably at a, you know, a moderate pace, you start doing it faster. You ramp up the drill intensity like we talk about on a lot of the drills here. So you start doubling the speed. You might go. And again, that's done without changing any sort of position. You're just literally breathing in and out using mouth pressure, You're not using your lungs at all. Just mouth pressure outwards, inwards, back to back, and just try and get it faster. You do that. If you can develop endurance to be able to do that quickly and just do it for maybe like 10 minutes a day till your face hurts. Don't like get face cramps. You don't want that. I guarantee you it'll improve the power and accuracy of your lip rolls by a ton because it's really good training. And so you go even faster with it. One thing I showed off before is just if you keep trying to amp the pace up. You, you might get something that sounds like And then if you go even faster than that and tighten the lips up, the sound changes. And I don't know what this is called. I've only seen a few people do something similar. It's still a lip roll. It's just a very, very fast, very tight controlled lip roll. And that sounds like. It actually becomes kind of more muted and synthy, but it, it's being done very fast and it's like very tightly controlled. And you do that, that will absolutely <laughs> make your face hurt. Free Sun says, well, because I have TMJ, my face cramps a lot. This might actually reduce face cramps. It might. I will say when we get to the, the next iteration of the lip roll related techniques. That one I do feel because I have a form of TMJ in my left side of my jaw, the same side I do all my sounds. And so if I practice a lot of the, the more strenuous lip roll type techniques, I do feel it, but it, it doesn't really bother me for beatboxing. But yeah, the basic lip roll is really handy to use. It's just 
a technique that takes a while to sort of practice. And once you get the technique, you just have to drill it. You just have to drill it and slowly refine the sound and you'll find it gets better. One thing I can't do, and I still haven't figured out why I've been trying to get the sound for a while is hollow lip rolls. I can hollow my throat out because I do it for several different techniques, but for some reason, the lip roll is one I can't do. If you hollow your throat out and do the regular lip roll, up, then it becomes really echoey and, and it sounds like it's vibrating to an extent. It sounds really cool, but it sounds totally different. The hollow lip roll is awesome. It's a really neat sound. I just can't do it. And talking to my beatbox teacher back when I was studying under one, he didn't really have any tips other than just keep trying to, to practice the hollowing of the throat until I can get it to a point where I can do the sound and hollow at the same time. I haven't been able to do it, which is a shame because a hollow lip roll and a hollow inward lip roll is really diff re different from the standard versions of the sounds. It's really cool to be able to do. On the topic of TMJ, Capri Sun says, mine is mild. Sometimes when I smile too much, I feel it on both sides of my face, but mostly on my left. So what was described to me for my case is there's like a, the dentist described it as a basically like a cushioned disc on the hinge of your jaw and upper and lower that acts like a buffer when your jaw opens and closes. Kind of like a, not like a lubricant, but it basically kind of facilitates the opening and closing of your jaw. And it's right in between where your, your upper and lower jaw meet. Well, for somehow through some sort of shock or trauma, the little connector part thing in my jaw moved. Like, I don't know where it is. I think technically it's on the other side of my, my jawbone. So now every time I open my, my mouth on the left side, my jaw pops. And it's basically because that little buffer piece is not there. So my jaw is essentially grinding. It doesn't hurt, but it does feel kind of weird. And the doctor said, unless it, it, it causes me a lot of physical pain, there's nothing they need to do about it now. Like I could get surgery to fix it, but unless it bothers me, it's not a big deal. And that was before I started beatboxing. So I'm sure that would be an interesting discussion to have. The doctor comes, comes up to me after looking at an x-ray and says, have you been practicing lip rolls? Looks like you've been doing lip rolls. Your jaw, your jaw muscles are all weird. I just say, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Capri Sun says, mine is because of my connective tissue disorder. Both parts of my jaw pop if I move it too far. I see. It sounds like there's a there's a bunch of different ways TMJ can kind of affect the way your, your jaw muscle, jaw, like joints and muscles work. So far, mine's really more of an annoyance than anything else. We'll see. Eventually, as I continue to get older and crustier, it may cause more of an issue and I'll have to do something about it, but we'll see. Okay, last thing we'll talk about on the on lip rolls before we move on to the BGM stuff, trying to keep an eye on the time here. The inward lip roll, the one that I think initially when lip rolls were really taking off in beatboxing, probably were the ones that got the most attention just because they're very noticeably forceful and the regular lip roll, it's unusual. And if you hear it, you're kind of thinking, you know, how do they do that sound? But the inward lip roll, it gets your attention. And I think that's why people really gravitated toward using the sound. Nowadays, I don't really know what's the, the really kind of trendy sound of choice amongst beatboxers because I don't watch a lot of beatbox content these days. I think basses are still pretty, pretty trendy and, and popular. Inward bass, vibration basses, I think are still pretty well used. Uh, technicality, I think, is still a thing, too. I honestly don't know because I haven't been keeping up on the scene too much, mostly because I don't want to accidentally rip off someone else's material. But the inward lip roll, which I got to be careful because if I do a variation, it's not really going to help the learning example for demonstration purposes, but the regular inner lip roll sounds like it's got a forceful punch and then the reverberation and resonance is that kind of flapping. It sounds like a really low 808 sub almost. And 
that is done twofold. And it's difficult to kind of instruct someone in doing the inward one if they don't know the regular. But all it is for the actual reverberating sound of that low noise is just breathing in while maintaining the liberal position. If you do it without the punch at the beginning, which I'll explain in a sec, if you just breathe in while maintaining the liberal position, you get... The punch is given is done to give it a real kick and force behind the actual inward lip roll to make it sound like a real heavy sub hit. You don't have to do that, but most people tend to do that. In fact, I learned how to do it that way before I learned how to not include that punch. And the punch is just an inwards kick, a really forceful inwards kick on the corner of your mouth. So if you think of a, a regular kick done nor normally, just the... The inward one is the same thing, but just on the corner of your mouth in the same position you would do the lip roll from, which would sound like. <laughs> and Skiller talks about this variation in his tutorial as well. You can actually see him do it. He's basically doing kind of like a, a kissing motion, but instead of keeping it a little more relaxed to get the. <laughs> he's really putting some suction and force behind it to get a punch, the actual kick sound. So instead of a. <laughs> you're getting a. <laughs> And you could do inward kicks. I don't do them a ton, but you can do them and replicate the actual kick sound the same way. But the in putting the breathing inwards lip roll up, combined with the inward kick at the beginning is how you're getting a very forceful. And if you do that on a system with a good low end, It'll shake the room. It is incredibly powerful. Now, just to recap something that I've talked about a little bit on stream here before, whenever I'll get like a drop a beat or something like that, redeem. I default to a variation of the inward lip roll that is my favorite, just because it sounds a little more distinct compared to the others. It's not night and day different, but it's a little bit, a little bit different. And I've just nicknamed it the siren inward lip roll just because it's high pitched. And I'll explain how that one works, especially for folks who are learning and eventually get to the point where they can do the inward lip roll because it's not hard. The the siren lip roll, and you folks have heard me do it before. It's not going to be new. It sounds like it's very high. You can hear compared the compared to the regular inward lip roll, it sounds like it's rattly, but the siren variant sounds like and I'll explain how to do it again the concept is not hard but you need to be able to do the regular lip roll in order to get there so when you do the regular inward lip roll just the your tongue is more or less neutral just flat it's not pressed against the bottom of your mouth it's not flapping in the way it's just kind of neutrally there I'm trying to think Mine is a little bit to the side right behind my lips, but it's out of the way of the sound because if it's too far, it's going to obscure the actual reverberating of your lips. But the... <laughs> keep your tongue out of the way. For the siren version, you lift up your tongue and you basically hiss inwards. So the motion you're doing is... You know like cats do? Everyone knows that sound but you're doing it inwards. So you, you raise up the back of your tongue to obstruct your airway. So when you're breathing in, instead of just a, you're getting a. You combine that with the inward lip roll and that's how you get a. And all it is is just changing the airway when you're breathing in again. The la that wasn't a super good example. I don't know why it didn't come out, but the regular one, the siren one. And one thing that's kind of fun about that one is you can oscillate the position of your tongue. So instead of just keeping it in one spot going, if you kind of change the position slightly up and down, you can make the, the high oscillation waver as well. And it would sound like, Which is why I called it a siren, siren and lip roll, because it sounds like an oscillating sound. 
it's really fun and I, I don't hear many people do it that way i can't be the first person but it's not common Capri Sun says i have never wanted to produce a sound out of my mouth more than i have right now well that's good that should give you some motivation to learn the regular lip roll and then the inward lip roll and then once you can do the inward lip roll i guarantee you, you can do the siren one like right after because all it is is just raising up your tongue to change the airway and figuring out the sweet spot to get it to go high instead of going low. And I'm just trying to think to make sure I'm not leaving anything out. Mouth positioning is a little bit different, but I don't think that really matters. You can do it from the same position. It's all in what your tongue position does to change the sound to go from the to a Next up, the last variation of the inward lip roll I'll talk about is the really low loose lip roll. It's not a sub bass. I can talk about sub bass as well. They, we should probably do that first. Skiller talks about sub bass in that tutorial. I know Capri Sun and I were chatting about it offline. It's a variation of lip roll technique, but it doesn't have any sort of resonance, but it's still very low. And a sub bass sounds like That one's a bit hard to describe, but it's basically an inward lip roll, but you're loosening up so that you're getting just a pure bass resonance and not any sort of flapping. And it sounds like a low punch of a bass tone. Presun says, I will not stop until I've mastered this. You may not hear from me for a few days. This has activated my autism if you catch my drift. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I think because it's a grind and you have to kind of experiment around with little tiny tweaks until you get the sound to click, then as soon as, as soon as it clicks, you should let me know and, and, and we'll celebrate. But kind of a second cousin, and we, we talked about this a couple streams back, I think when I was playing Dyson Sphere program, but the variation of the inner lip roll that I really like and I use a lot to me, I like is like more than the, the sub bass because it's got more rattle to it. And that's just a loose inward lip roll. It's, I think it's the, the loosest, largest opening you can do without actively opening your mouth, which breaks the, the spot where you can do the technique. But the, I don't think it has a name because it's very similar to the sub bass, but it has resonance of a lip roll. So it's not a sub bass. It's like a sub bass lip roll. And that one sounds like, trying to make sure I do the right one yeah that's that's close enough you can hear it rattling but it's very low and I don't know what it sounds like to people that are watching the stream but if I look at the the audio readout it goes pretty high when I do that and that one is another one that is pretty easy to do once you can do the regular inward lip roll you basically just take the same position you breathe in for the punch and then just open your mouth on the corner, not all the way, just at the corner where you're doing the lip roll and you open it up and continue, you breathe in a lot. This one takes in the most air because the pocket of the resonance is a lot more wide open than the regular lip roll the, or the, the regular inwards one, which sounds like the, that one draws a ton of air in. So if you're doing a real heavy, drop or bass type of chain of sounds and you are running out of air being able to use the loose low inward lip roll gets you a ton of air back so like let's say you're doing something kind of dubstep adjacent and your beat was something like That sound brings in enough air to replace a full breath. And that's kind of something to keep in mind when, when we talk about air control and regulation, because 
you could stop and take a breath, but if you work in that loose inward lip roll, even the, any of the inward lip rolls, you can bring in enough air to not necessitate stopping and breathing because you're bringing in all that air with the sound. And that's really useful. It allows you to create really seamless transitions between different things and works pretty well for endurance. It's just kind of one thing to get used to as you, you practice. Another thing that I think is kind of fun that I don't do a ton, you could take the low lip roll and change your mouth position a little bit to change the low sound. So instead of just a, you do something like, and that's done by just going really loose to the lower one, tightening it up to get the resonance. And that's how you're getting a, which is again, just playing around with the, the opening that the air is coming through and you can change the sound pretty rapidly. And it sounds like you're going, oh, which is essentially what you're doing with your mouth. Prisan says one of my biggest struggles to be quite honest is air control. I have exercise induced asthma. My lungs can be improved, but that's my biggest struggle. It's actually good that you mentioned that Capri Sun and I, I don't, I'm not a respiratory doctor or anything, so I, I don't know for asthma specifically, but as it relates to beatboxing, doing breathing exercises is really helpful for conditioning your lungs to be used to having more air and control. And again, I don't know if asthma makes that harder for your, your lung conditioning to work, but one thing my original teacher recommended you do, and it sounds kind of silly, but it does work. When you're warming up and practicing beatboxing, if you just practice taking in several slow, don't do it too fast, you're gonna hyperventilate and pass out on your feet, but you just practice slow breaths as much as you can in your lungs, hold it, and then slowly breathe out. And you do that for maybe five or so minutes, over time, your lungs will be conditioned to holding more air and it improves the capacity of your lungs. Again, asthma might complicate that a little and make it more challenging, but just like the way people train for wind instruments, they do the same thing and they learn to train their lungs for endurance and capacity. It might not sound intuitive, but that is absolutely a thing that helps beatboxing. So as you're learning and kind of working through the different parts of the technique, when you're going to set aside time to practice beatboxing, I would just take like a real quick five minutes to do some really deep breaths. And it, it's as simple as breathing in slowly as much as you can, hold it for a second and then breathe out. Just a same, same thing that people recommend for stress alleviation. You do that and it will help your ability to maintain air in beatboxing. Prisun says, actually there's a style of breathing called Wim Hof that does the same thing. Guy created it, made it to control the temperature of the body and use the technique to climb Everest in shorts. Ah, sounds like, again, physical conditioning using similar techniques. So I, that's definitely makes sense in tracks. I need to do more breathing exercises. I, I probably could have even more air capacity than I, I do normally. As a, a person who practices singing in a former wind player, that's I kind of did that already. But for someone who's learning beatboxing, there's a lot of kind of synergy when it comes to conditioning that way too. Prisun says the technique puts a lot of stress in the cardiovascular system, so it increases heart power as well. Ah, I guess that's probably really key for conditioning your body to survive lower oxygen environments and overall like high altitude stress. That's good to know. All right. I think we are just about ready to move on to BGM brainstorming before we do, since I know Capri Sun, the liberal stuff was what you requested. And I want to make sure 
before we move on, if you have any questions or things you want me to explain before we move on, by all means, we can talk about it right now. I'm not on a strict schedule this evening. So at the time, I want to make sure you you specifically and everyone else who watches this gets the most out of me explaining stuff. So if you have anything you want me to, to focus on before we move on, just uh, let me know in the chat. Sun says, I've made progress and will watch the videos you sent me, but I also want to brainstorm. Okay, that's fair. I think the videos will help. The videos can illustrate things a bit better than I can and explain things a bit better than I can. So I await the next progress report. Hopefully the stuff helps you figure out the technique and you'll be on your way. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reconnect my mic. So I'm going to put this on the sound source I normally use, and then I'm going to pipe the sound from the loop through, and we will get started with BGM. So give me one quick second, and we'll test sound to make sure it's good, and we will move on to brainstorming some ideas. Freesun says, maybe next time I have a recorded lip roll ready. Yeah, it's, if you want to send me video clips of what you've done, I, I can listen to them. And if I can hear anything outright, that might help. I can try and, and offer some feedback. It's tough without seeing what someone's face is doing. And I'm not asking people to send me video clips of their faces. It's really more a matter of what the sound sounds like and comparing it to things like in the video sample. That's more, much more helpful than me trying to instruct people in real time. But, but yeah, keep, keep grinding, keep grinding. All right. Give me one second and we will get everything hooked up for BGM. All right, mic check. It's going to sound a little different because I'm on the Scarlet now instead of the mic coming out of the loop station. Let's see. Make sure you can hear me all right. And let's test the, the input from the loop station. So I'm going to turn the boost off because that alone is going to make it sound really loud. So let's see, sound check on the synthesizer. Okay, it's definitely gonna be low. So I'm gonna up the volume, I'm gonna turn my headphones down so I don't deafen myself. I think last time, uh, this is just based on what I, I saw watching the archive footage from the last time we tried this, this setup. I think the loop audio with the synth was a little low. So I'm going to boost it up a bit going forward. And you folks can let me know if it's too loud. Uh, let me pull up drums. Drums tend to be a bit louder. So let's test this. Um, I'll put it 50% on the synth. Let's drop it maybe a hair. Because if I can record these at a slightly higher volume, it'll help when I'm recording these on my machine after I capture them on the loop. Which is a problem for some of our older stuff, but that's not a big deal. This new setup, I think, will work better going forward. Okay. Free Sun says, sounds good. Okay, as long as you can hear me over the the instruments that's what I care about immediately all right so I didn't really have a plan for what I wanted to mess around with BGM wise so I'm going to put together some stuff and we'll kind of talk about it in real time since I can talk to you folks now but as we go forward, I might take some suggestions from the chat as far as some styles or genres or things you 
that we can try. But well, this one will be kind of like a warm up. I'm thinking kind of more like a mid tempo, maybe more chill type sound, which I tried to do last time and I failed. So let's see if we can do it this time. Let's loop that in one measure instead of four. Bree Sun says a little quiet. Okay. I have to fix that. Max on headphones. Okay, I'm going to up the volume on the synth, and I'm going to see what the audio readout says. And I'm trying to blow anybody's ear, eardrums out here. Because I don't want this to drown me out. Otherwise, you folks won't be able to hear what I'm saying. Let's, uh, let's try this on loop, and let me know what, let me know what this sounds like. Okay, so we're at about 60% volume on the synth. I will, if I can write down on my post note that's sitting on my synth. I'm going to say 60%. It's not exactly 60% with a, a hard number because there's it's a dial, but it's about about 60%, more than 50. Okay, so let's start layering in some other percussion sounds. Okay, we've got a bass rhythm. Now let's layer in a bass. If we want to go for something a bit more chill, I'm, hmm. we'll go for something on the low end, but maybe we can try and slice it with, with a low low increment slicer so it's not rapid, but it sounds kind of more, more gradual, if that makes sense. So let's let's do quarters first. And we'll go guitar to bass to boost the low end. of a slow pulsing bass line two notes up and then back down
And I have that on reverse. We don't want that. Bit of a bit of a sting on the on the first note, but I, I think we can still work with that. There we go. Forgot what notes I used. That's always good. Okay. Let's add in another bass instrument on top of that. Maybe drop it down a little bit so it doesn't obscure this one too much. We'll use the same slicer pattern. Similar bass, it, it, it just kind of adds to the sound. It doesn't sound like a different instrument, but we can go up to strings and see if that makes a difference. Or if we want to mix up what's on the bass line, which we might have to put on a different track. Let's see what it sounds like. We can change the frequency of the slicer. So we can go to eighths. instead of quarters. Even add some panning delay to give it a little bit more of kind of a stutter and move it around in the audio channels. That's not bad. Trying to think of another uh, instrument to layer onto this. It's gonna kind of give it more of like a mellow, mellow tone. I was thinking uh, saxophone. So we can see what that sounds like. There we go. It's in the middle. Wasn't all the way down. What I was thinking we could do to kind of layer some stuff. Maybe octave it and go go up one. With the alto, different sax. Don't 
think it's a little bit loud. Are you still able to hear me talking over this thing? Prison asks, do you have do you have a title for the song yet, or is that part of the brainstorming? It's definitely part of the brainstorming, so write your ideas down. When we get to the end, we can start putting stuff down and chances are it's going to be one of your ideas that's going to be the name of the track so yeah start writing them down uh let me see i do want to stick with the the sax But I want to put a distortion over it. Let's see. We could we could try and filter it. Problem is the filter cuts a lot of the volume out. But it does create kind of an interesting warbling to the sound. So let's layer it in and see what happens. take this specific filter preset that I have on this particular file and we turn it on it creates this kind of signal distortion that I've used but we can also mess around with the frequency to change its speed which I'm considering doing for this but I kind of want to layer it in and see what it sounds like I think it's I think it's too fast Back off the synth for a sec. Free Sun says, like a song where you're waiting for an outcome. Yeah, it, it does sound kind of like patient and methodical as opposed to like, like rushing. It almost sounds like you're walking down a corridor at a leisurely pace, like in a, a dungeon or something like that. And I don't know if I'm going to keep this signal at the end. I'm going to leave it right there just to add some, some complexity and texture. But now we need to add in another instrument. Let's see if we can take some of the presets and change the sound of Synth 329, which is one of my favorites. It's the one that kind of sounds like the chip y video game-y type sound. It sounds like this.
That's an interesting idea. Adding like an alternate bass line or a supplement to the bass line that has movement instead of just single notes. Hmm. I was thinking about alternating ones and twos, but... That's a little bit tougher. It kind of conflicts a little bit. But if we take 329 and we, we go all the way up to the upper register, that's what it sounds like. Which we could do an alternate melody from the, the, the main synth line that we have with the, the saxophones because we play these at the same time, the notes will definitely clash. But we could have something else that comes up here in the upper register and then if we want to bring slicer back. I need to be careful about spamming the slicer effect. But we can take this one up to 16 and then add like a delay and it would create like an echo ping, which is kind of cool. Let me demonstrate what that would sound like. sound like this. Hmm, can have a longer melody. Let's try that for now. Maybe we, we pump this one up in the mix a little bit so that it's not behind the, the bass and make it a little bit louder above it. I'm taking the, the distortion off. I can put something better. One day I'll figure out how to use the vinyl flick effectively. Filter transition, swap out the melodies for the other high synth, like so. To Lava King's point about like riding horseback, it's got a little bit 
of a gallop to it. And I think I, I definitely pick up what Lava King's saying, which is interesting. That wasn't the plan. <laughs> This is the phaser effect. It adds kind of like a laser distortion over everything. The squiggle was the, the record scratch or vinyl flick. All right, let's, let's swap to the other melody. Almost functional, almost. Bring the beat back. Thinking about outro for the track. Done a lot of fade outs from the bass fading out to like a synth line and then the last thing you hear is the synth line. Don't know if I would do it here, but it is an idea. So let me save this first and foremost. I would hate to lose all that work. So interesting, interesting progression for this one. It is pretty chill and it doesn't sound overly dark like so much of the things I tend to create. <laughs> Indirectly, I don't know why. But I do like the kind of methodical pace that does kind of sound like you're you're moving. It sounds like movement, but it's not like one two one two one two where you're running. It's more kind of like a saunter. And I think that's an interesting idea to kind of mess around with. We do have one more track that does not have anything looped on it. But I think I kind of like what this the way this is set up with two different melody patterns. So we have this one kind of sounds similar to what I've done on a couple other tracks. I don't know if I'm going I'm to keep this one or replace it, but I'll keep it for now. And then the other one. I like the, I like the second one a lot more than the first one, honestly. I did see further up in the chat, Capri Sun said, I'm a genius. I am not. The way I do this is the most, like, caveman, brute force way of trying to put music together. If I actually knew music theory, you wouldn't hear me, like, like noodling around on the chords trying to find something that sounds good together. I would be able to inherently know that. So, I, I'm, I'm just a, a random schmo trying to figure out how to make music. But I do think this one is kind of an interesting result, so... Let's hear uh, let's hear your suggestions for tracks while I go grab my uh, document that I write all the stuff down in on my computer, and we'll see what kind of fits, and then we'll move on to the next one. I'll I'll turn the track back on so you folks can listen to it while you you drop your suggestions. King says Miami Rodeo. Just 
I, I'm not putting the word rodeo in one of my tracks. As a person who has lived in an area that was very, very country, I do not have an affinity for rodeos. And by suing by Miami, you meant like Miami, Florida. As, as funny as that would be, I do not want to invoke Florida imagery and thus summon the spirit of Florida man. Oh, I got you, Lava King, like like Miami Vice or Vice City. I like the idea of kind of focusing in on maybe more of like a, a city or urban theme for the track title. We need to be careful, though, because we've done a lot. We've done at least a couple that have like Metro or City or Metropolis or stuff like that. So, I, I, in fact, one thing I need to do, I haven't done it yet, but I need to create a, a name database of all my tracks so I can keep track of what I've called all, all the ones that we've released so far. I haven't done that yet. I probably should. Maybe when I, I get back this weekend, I will put them all together. That way, if I ever need to refer to the list, I'll know exactly what I called my songs. Ah, Capri Sun says, I stand by patience. What if we found a way, I kind of like, I like the idea of patience. What if we found a way to connect the, the idea of patience with what Lava King is saying for, uh, like the Western, I'm not going to put Western in the title. It's, it's going to immediately invoke like <laughs> country music imagery and I hate country music. Um, what if we said patient gallop? Because if you think of the, the, the bass plus the rhythm. It is a, it's not like a true gallop, but it's kind of similar. Bob King says, patient station. So you're going more like the train, the train route. Hmm. I like patient, patient station, maybe patient sta patient station kind of doesn't roll the off the tongue too well, but patient station sounds like a hospital, like it sounds medical. And Capri Sun says steady, but patient pace. Yeah, I was thinking about the word pace too. We have a song called Swagger Pace already. And I don't think I've used the word station. I'd, I'd have to check, but patience, patience station. I'm leaning towards patience station. Like what Lava King suggested. What, what do we think about that? Let's let's have a discussion. I'm not going to unilaterally make a ruling. Sun says, what about that is wrong? Patients hospital? No, no, not patients, like patient hospital. It sounds like, or patient, patient station. It sounds like, like a hospital ward, which to me kind of seems to conflict with the, the kind of vibe of movement. And it's got a bit more energy than seems to kind of fit doesn't seem to kind of fit like the, the overall mood of the song. This is what I'm trying to say. Lava King says stationary patience. Ooh, I like that better. I like that better. Stationary patience. That is actually kind of thematically on point because it sounds like someone who's kind of stuck in one place, but is, is waiting. You know, they're not anxious about it. They're, they're, patiently waiting in a stationary place kind of like you would if you were waiting for a train i like that we're gonna go with that good good job lava king and and capri sun for for putting together your your brain brain ideas stationary patience i'm gonna write that down
Okay. Very good. Let's do one final save, and we'll move on. Let's do one more. I don't know how long this one's going to take, but let's let's do another one. This is file 30. So we'll clear this off. I kind of want to do something a bit more aggressive and higher energy, but I'm not exactly sure the best way to approach it. Still trying to get my head around dialing in like a rock type sound. A lot of the Halloween tracks were definitely the closest I've ever gotten in just messing around with this type of method of creating music. But what if we took like an electronic type so sound? I kind of been in the electronic vibe lately, but we up the pace and maybe kind of trying to give it some heavier, heavier bass lines and some other types of instruments. Maybe we can mess around with guitars. Uh, the guitars on this particular synthesizer are not bad, but you can pair them with some interesting distortion to give them more punch. So let's let's start by trying to establish the rhythm. I'm gonna go electronic kit for this one. Maybe we can try and get something that's in the realm of industrial, like a kind of kind of heavy, heavy distortion type of, of sound, but still like electronic. I like industrial, but I'm not too good at replicating its sound. Alright, let's test to make sure. I think that's about good. The playback on loop is different from the capture of the sounds when I'm recording the loop because I have the loop set at a certain volume. So when I'm messing around on the keyboard, you'll hear it louder than when it's playing back because I have the volume drop. So hopefully it's not spiking volume in people's headphones. That's why I asked to, to make sure we weren't getting too loud. These are some interesting snares. Does anybody listen to Phil Collins? Almost in the air tonight. That's a bit more of like a semi like rockish drum rhythm. I was, I was mostly just trying to do the, where is it? Hey, it's a good song. In the Air Tonight is is a good song. It's not a happy song, but it's one of Phil Collins' biggest hits. We're going to go higher energy than that, though. Mm, that's a little bit similar to some of the ones on Blood Moon Rights. That's pretty fast. We could also We could also try a more gallop tempo, which is different from the one we just did. I got one that sounds kind of like this, but we can probably give it some distinct flavor. It's going to set it apart. It is, I don't know, faster. It's running up that hill, at least the rhythm. I like that. I like that snare better. Let's mess around with this as a bass. Prison asks, is that, I could feel it coming in the air tonight. Yeah, that was the Phil Collins song, In the Air Tonight. Ah, I think it's off by a millisecond. Let's try it again. Too much, a little too much stank on that second snare. I 
Capri Sun says, speech to text calls you rock who? Rock who indeed. Rock me Amadeus. That may or may not have been my Twitter name at one point. All right. So we got a much faster galloping, galloping rhythm. Priestson says, I love that German song, Rock Me Amadeus. Yeah, it's Falco. Falco's a legend. Rest in peace, Falco. I think he died in the 90s. But yeah, he was quite an interesting artist. All right, let's, let's see if we can get some distortion on guitar for a bass line. This is like an overdriven electric guitar. Ooh, I think it's a better start note. This is, I gotta be a little careful because we did a similar bass line to this on Sacrificial Search. But let's see if we can add some distortion. First some guitar to bass. Sounds really aggressive. bass over this maybe layer it down a little bit so that it's not overpowering the drums but with the same note progression just with a bit more kind of like like plucked or string bass electric bass Rhythm, we have bass line. What if we go back to guitar and maybe maybe try to do like riffs? I, I need to learn kind of some, some good strategies for riffs and I think we can slice. I think we can use slicer for that and it might work pretty well. Let's see what happens. basically a power chord. We could octave it.
bad. spot. It needs to be at the beginning, I think. said like De Niro and taxi driver like midnight you see fast travel so you call for the taxi but it's driven by a cross between a nom vet and outdated robot like a futuristic kind of like a futuristic night cruise type of theme I think so I think this is channeling a little bit of like like 80s action 80s action or sci-fi a bit which wasn't, wasn't my goal but kind of an interesting result Let's see what else we can add to this thing. Ooh, we really want to go like like synthwave, vaporwave, cyberpunkish. We have to put strings. Let's see if it's too played out and cliched. Hmm, what's the progression here? There you go. Boost the, the strings up in the mix a little bit. Bring a beat back. Reminds me of Terminator a little bit. Prison says that perfectly scratched my autism. Do you have a name for that? A, a name for when something like hits that part of your brain? I, I do not. I, I know I've heard other people mention that too. Oh, the song? No, no, no. We're 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 leaving it up to uh, leaving it up to suggestions for the songs. I'll let you folks know if I have a song title in mind for something I'm writing. Usually, it's open ended. So yeah, think of, think of suggestions as, as we kind of put this thing together. Okay, so we have strings. What would be another... We have one more loop track that's empty. What would be another good compliment for something like this? The, that kind of signal, signal synth we use, it's going to sound too similar, but... What if we took something in a similar vein and tried to maybe filter it to get a different instrument and we we, we added it in here. Let's see what we got. How about a banjo? I'm mostly kidding, but unless
kind of like the, the the melody, but I don't. I wouldn't do it with the banjo. Let's see what else we got with the same same melody but different instrument. Orchestral hit. <laughs> That's so silly. Wrong note. Hmm. I feel like a, a chorus synth would kind of contrast and maybe clash a little bit with the strings. Could bring back saxophone. go one octave lower. We're here. Ooh, not bad, not bad. Whoops. I think that's got potential. Right notes. Uh, I feel like it's off by like a, a half second. It's not quite on the on the beat. It's okay, we can redo it again. the wrong key terrible I have that problem all the time when I'm recording this stuff solo I'll fat finger a key and then have to redo the whole thing all right come on let's try and be professional from the top Let me pause, save, and let's. I think that's got a lot of lot of potential. I, I kind of like the way this one came together quite a bit. But let's take it from the top. Think of how we would start the track. Maybe we go we go baseline first. We could do we could do like a panning effect that has distortion on the bass to start, and then it comes off when everything comes in. So let's see where's panning delay. We could do something like. Maybe both these two? Ooh. You can hear how it's moving around in the sound channels. hiccup on the, the repeat for the, the strings. I'd have to fade it in so you don't have that hiccup, but that's that's easy to work around. Give it a short break. We're bringing the last track.
All right, let's save the update there. This one's interesting. This one has a very different vibe than the last one. Kind of surprised it, it kind of gelled, considering it's a very different style than the last couple ones I've been working on. Capri Sun says, Rocco, I'm crossfaded, but this is so good. I would pay for that song. Well, fortunately, you don't have to when this eventually makes it into a release. I'm This one is strong enough, I think, that it's going to go into a, an actual theme release instead of the BGM collection. So there'll probably be another electronic album coming up, and this one would go in that release. But I know, I know, I know you're saying that, but... This stuff will be free on streaming platforms. But that's very kind of you. But I kind of like the, uh, the kind of aggression to it, which is something I'm trying to get better at. I'm trying to get better at conveying kind of that more kind of heavy, heavy sort of feel. And again, this is closer to like a rock type sound, probably the closest of any I've done recently outside of the whole uh, Halloween project. But definitely inter an interesting result in contrast with the last one so one thing i was thinking about doing this is just an idea to throw out i'll probably talk more with the community in the discord when i try and line something up but as far as content goes would you folks be interested in me doing like a dj set concert so it wouldn't be so much like a jam stream where we're creating the tracks. It would basically be me with the loop station and probably like a whole series of tracks you folks haven't heard that are been pre-recorded, pre-arranged on the loop. And basically I run through like a set. So I start with one and I put basically kind of ad lib the overall track and I, I basically run through like a, a DJ set for a stream. Would you folks be interested in something like that? Yeah, kind of like a concert, but it it wouldn't be super structured. I'd probably talk a little bit, and it's mo be mostly like a big thing to kind of hang out and experiment with the music. Because again, I, I have to practice how to do the loops, which is not a big deal. But what I was thinking about doing, and I need to talk to Matt about this as well and see what he thinks. I was thinking about doing a like a mini DJ concert for Extra Life. So what it would be would be like a, a, a coordinated stream event where basically I'm running through just like an entire loop station series of songs and figure out how many and anything. And the whole thing would be like in promotion of extra life. So if people donate and whatnot, then it would go towards that. And I'd have to figure out a way to hook in the extra life plugin so that, you know, it could pop up and people would be able to see it. But it'd be like a charity concert with my loop station stuff for like a full DJ set. If that's something you folks would be interested in, then I can start putting stuff together because there, there's a lot of stuff on here you guys haven't heard. And a lot of it goes into the recordings for future projects and other things, and some stuff gets shelved, stuff gets put for later. But just like we do here, again, not creating the stuff live, but me actually, quote-unquote, performing and showing the tracks off live. If that's something you folks would be interested in, then I can I can talk to Matt and see if... I can find a way to hook that in. I, I wouldn't want to do it like through his channels and, and force him to do all that stuff. It would be something I do here, but have it hooked in so that like people can donate and whatnot and be like a charity concert. Um, I will, I will mention this again in the future because it, it's an idea I've been kicking around for a bit and it'd be nice if I can get some assets that will create more of kind of like a visual. What I'd like to have ideally would be like a, a DJ table and like a thing for my hands, like an animated looping GIF of my hands on the loop station. So you're not just looking at me without any sort of thing, like a background, but keep that as an idea for a potential piece of content in the future. I could also do like just stuff off stream as well. Like through the discord, we could do like, like basically just vibe <laughs> vibe events where I go through the loop station, but We'll we'll see. I I I will ask. I'll ask in the uh, 
in the Discord, Capri Sun says, when you see like the record scratching and stuff, I don't know how to really do that with the the vinyl scratch effect. You can you can make it sort of I don't have it on right now, but you can make it sort of scratch, but you can't like do like cuts and scratches like on regular turntables. It, it doesn't really work that way, but it'd be cool if it did. Let me see where is it? Vinyl flick. Yeah, like so. Let's turn the beat on. So it's just on a dial. Oh, interesting for the rhythm. You can't even hear it. Yeah, it's it doesn't function like you're scratching on a vinyl. It's more like you're taking a record and you're slowing it down very, very slowly until it stops. That's how that effect works. And it doesn't have settings. It's, it basically works one way. It's very interesting. But it, yeah, it distorts. It creates distortion. So like... If we take like a, a high melody... We can kind of create distortion, but I can't like do rapid cuts. That'd be really cool if you could do that. Yeah, because what, what the effect is doing, it's not stopping the record. It's slowing it down and then speeding it back up in increments. So when I go up and down with the effect knob, it's basically slowing down and then re resuming normal speed. It's not doing like a rapid like attack cut, which kind of sucks. It'd be cool if it could do that. Yeah, it basically functions like a slowdown speed up effect. It's very weird. Okay, before we get ready to wrap up, what do we want to call this one, folks? Let me turn it back on. Lava King says, Scrapyard Taxi. Ooh, that, I do like the sound of that. I think with the saxophone riff, it gives kind of like the effect of like driving through like a, maybe like a futuristic city at night. Maybe it's raining. It's got kind of like a dark atmosphere. But it, and it's a little bit foreboding. It's obviously, if you're not careful, you're gonna end up in the really, really rough part of town. Yeah, I like that. Let's go with Scrapyard Taxi. I don't think I've used either of those keywords in any of my tracks. It's gonna go here in 4.0, but this one's most likely to go into a themed themed set. So let me write it down. Yeah. Good suggestion, Lava King. It has been captured for the record. Okay. Very good. Well, before we wrap up, I was thinking about this before. Do you folks want to hear a loop track that I didn't do on stream? And I don't know what I'm going to use it for yet, but you want to hear something from the the archives here? Let's figure out which one. So let me do this. I'm going to mute my loop station, but not my mic. So I'm going to go back through some of my older files, and I'm going to find one that we can listen to. So I'm going to keep talking. You won't be able to hear anything as I scroll back through, but let's see. So this was 30. 29 was the one we just did. Okay, 
that one was on 27. Oh, this one's interesting. This is a potential one for a Halloween project, I think. All right, let me let me adjust the mixing to where I want it. And then basically, this is kind of an example of what I would do for like a concert. Everything would be kind of preloaded or I'd have to write my settings down per track. And when we start, I basically go into the song, maybe talk a little bit about it, or we go through it and then talk about it after. And essentially, you're doing back to back to back like songs, like an actual performance. But let me let me adjust the mixing. You guys are going to be able to hear anything. I'll make this brief. Oh, this one's lower volume than the last couple we've done. Okay. I'm thinking I have to put everything at max. Okay, let me fix this last one. Okay, that one can be down there. Okay, this one doesn't have a name, and I think it's going to most likely be for a Halloween project. Gives me gives me that kind of vibe. But let me unmute this. And let's take it from the top. I think I want to be on three first. little bit of filter back fade out the chime synth Not quite sure if I want to finish on just the empty beat by itself. Hey, Edward's here. What's up, Edward? We're doing a bit of a track preview here from some stuff that's on my loop station that I'm going to be using for a future project. kind of a rehash of the first few iterations we did when I did an initial pass on this one. And I think the outro would be kind of something along those lines, but that one's kind of fun. I forget which instrument I used for that main synth, the one that sounds like this. 
it's some sort of string instrument. I don't know, remember if it's a, a distorted sitar or something like that. But it gives this, this kind of like like ritualistic feel to it, like a some sort of occult, which a lot of my stuff tends to end up being like occult adjacent, but kind of like some sort of unholy ceremony. Maybe maybe I'm thinking of the Sam Smith song Unholy. There, there might be a, a riff similar. I wasn't even thinking about that song recently, but maybe that's where it's coming from. But yeah, that one will be part of a future project. I'm thinking Halloween. I just need to figure out what I'm going to do with it. And what I'm going to call it. I'm in the process of brainstorming some stuff for the next Halloween project. I want to do something a little bit different than I did for last year. We got some ideas. We'll, we'll see how that all pans out. Okay, I think we will call that a jam stream there. I know I know you jumped on a little bit late, Edward, so you probably didn't hear the other two songs that we did earlier on in the jam stream. It'll be in the VOD. They, they had some pretty interesting end results that we, we came up with as we were, we were tinkering around with the loop here. And with the help of chat, we have names for, for those tracks that will also be part of a future project. So let me see. I'll leave this playing for now while I check the, the homie list and see who is online that we can raid. Oh, let's see. Let me go to my main page. I see Gutter Snipes online. He is playing Yu-Gi-Oh again. We can go over there and spread some good chill vibes. Okay, so let me go ahead and pause this. We'll go ahead and mute the loop station and we will go to outro. And we will call that good. Once again, thanks to all you folks for coming and hanging out while we talked about some beatboxing and actually created some beats. It was a pretty interesting brainstorming session, as always. We will be back next week. I have a short streaming schedule this week because i got some stuff going on this weekend. But we will be back next week, jumping back to the games that we've been playing, more, more DSP. I'm thinking maybe Pokemon DSP and either something else and or blasphemous I haven't decided yet but we shall see so in the meantime let's queue up the, the raid for gutter snipe and I hope everyone has a good evening and I will catch you in the next stream